Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers disorderly conduct, self-incrimination, and reckless driving, and is brought to us by Lackluster's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On May 10th, 2019, disabled veteran Charles Donner and his wife Brittany were driving behind Arkansas State Police Trooper Ryan Wingo in Hot Springs, Arkansas, when Trooper Wingo made a sudden U-turn to attempt to pursue a vehicle traveling the opposite direction that was allegedly speeding. Mr. Donner honked his horn at Trooper Wingo, and Trooper Wingo responded by making a full 360-degree turn, passing another vehicle and pulling behind Mr. Donner with his lights flashing. When Mr. Donner pulled to the right side of the road and stopped his vehicle, Trooper Wingo crashed into him with his cruiser. Pull into the parking lot! Pull into the parking lot! Sixty Hot Springs. Go ahead and send uh, one of the normal units over here to the uh, shoot factory. I had a car slam on the right in front of me. Oh. 10-4, 10-9. License registration insurance, sir. Yeah, sure. Why are you pulling me over? Because you're following me too close, they nearly ran to me. No, I did not. You slammed on your brakes. You had no brake. You had no turn signal or nothing. I had to turn around on the car without speeding. I'm doing my job out here, sir. Give me your license. You hit me. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll see you in court, dude. Take it on. Look at my car. All right. Take a seat in the car for right now. We're on traffic stop right now. Hey, okay. Hey, you hit my car. We're on traffic stop right now. Out here. I want to see the damage done to my. Give me a minute. We're on a traffic stop right now. Once I get done with my traffic stop, we're following too closely. I was not following too close. Clearly, you were. You hit me. You stopped in the middle of a roadway, sir. No, you I didn't stop. I got over and I was I was in the lane. You trying stopped to speed in the lane. back up. No, no I was you trying to speed the... back up. Okay, you sir. You slammed on your gas. Okay. And you hit us. Okay. So. Okay. Well, I'm so I told you why I stopped you because you were following me too closely. But I wasn't. But okay. okay. We'll see in court. Okay. Do you have an ID on you, ma'am? I sure do. You don't need your ID. Yes, I do actually for the accident report That's that you fine. so that you so want, sir. Yes. I do want it. Okay. You fucking hit me. There's no damage between our vehicles, though. I don't well, give a. F bro, you. F ah. hit me. Yeah. Ah. Trooper Wingo rips open Mr. Donner's door, orders him to exit the vehicle, and places him under arrest for disorderly conduct. Arkansas's disorderly conduct law, which is found in section 5-71-207 of the Arkansas Code, states that, quote, A person commits the offense of disorderly conduct if, with the purpose to cause public inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, or recklessly creating a risk of public inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, he or she engages in fighting or in violent, threatening, or tumultuous behavior, makes unreasonable reasonable or excessive noise, in a public place uses abusive or obscene language, or makes an obscene gesture in a manner likely to provoke a violent or disorderly response. Not only was Mr. Donner's conduct not likely to cause a public disturbance, as he was only speaking to Trooper Wingo, but, as we've discussed before on ATA, profanity is protected speech under the First Amendment, and citizens cannot be arrested for simply using curse words. For instance, in the 2000 case of Nichols v. Chacon, the West District of Arkansas determined that a police officer violated the First and Fourth Amendments when he arrested an individual under this same disorderly conduct statute for giving him the middle finger. The court concluded that, although the gesture was inarticulate and crude, quote, it represented an expression of disapproval toward a police officer with whom he had just had a run-in. As such, it fell squarely within the protective umbrella of the First Amendment, and any action to punish or deter such speech, such as stopping or hassling the speaker, is categorically prohibited by the Constitution. In reaching this decision, the court reviewed a long long line of Supreme Court decisions on the issue, including the 1987 case of Houston versus Hill. In this case, the court held that, quote, the First Amendment protects a significant amount of verbal criticism and challenge directed at police officers. Speech is often provocative and challenging, but it is nevertheless protected against censorship or punishment, unless shown likely to produce a clear and present danger of a serious substantive evil that rises far above public inconvenience, annoyance, or unrest. The court also noted that, quote, the freedom of individuals' verbal to oppose
oppose or challenge police action without thereby risking arrest is one of the principal characteristics by which we distinguish a free nation from a police state. Given the well-established legal precedent protecting the right to use profanity and express disapproval of police officers, a court would almost certainly conclude that Trooper Wingo's actions violated Mr. Donner's constitutional rights. You're under arrest for disorderly conduct, sir. Ooh. Come on. Take a seat. Okay, you can calm down. Okay. Why are you doing this? Ma'am, <laughs> there was no need for cussing me out. Until he can calm down and act like an adult, <laughs> he's going to sit in the back of the car. Let me explain to you. My husband we has severe PTSD. Severe. Severe. He's a 100% disabled veteran. And he is fucking. That's why I'm here. You're going to talk, you're gonna talk to me? You're going to let me talk or you're just going to interrupt me the entire time, ma'am? I'm sorry. Okay. Until he can calm down and act like a human being and stop cussing me out for no reason, so I'm trying to explain to him what happened. But he doesn't want to let me talk, okay? So do you want to let me talk or not? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Now. You gonna calm down or you gonna continue cussing? I just want your badge number and your name. You gonna? I'm asking you a simple question. So you gonna calm sure. down? Sure. I just want your badge number and your name. That's all I want. Okay. Well, I'm trying to ask. And you I a said question. sure, officer. Okay. Well, you gonna continue cussing me out or not? Because that was that, and you're going to say sure, then I'm not going to have you sit out here and cuss at me for no reason. There's no fit to, you're not incriminating yourself, sir. Here, Trooper Wingo tells Mr. Donner that he doesn't need to invoke his right to silence because he's not being asked incriminating questions. However, the Fifth Amendment applies to a much broader range of interrogation than blatantly incriminating questions, and individuals should exercise their right to remain silent in a variety of situations. In the 1951 case of Hoffman v. United States, the Supreme Court held that the right against self-incrimination, quote, not only extends to answers that would in themselves support a conviction, but likewise embraces those which would furnish a link in the chain of evidence needed to prosecute the claimant. The court also determined that citizens cannot be compelled to answer questions when they have reasonable cause to fear consequences from answering the question, or when it is, quote, evident from the implications of the question, in the setting in which it is asked, that a responsive answer to the question or an explanation of why it cannot be answered might be dangerous because injurious disclosure could result. Similarly, in the 2001 case of Ohio v. Reiner, the Supreme Court determined that both innocent and guilty individuals have the right to remain silent during police interrogation because, quote, truthful responses of an innocent witness, as well as those of a wrongdoer, may provide the government with incriminating evidence from the speaker's own mouth, and that it is reasonable for an individual to fear that answering police questions might incriminate them. In this situation, answering even a seemingly innocuous question, such as, are you going to calm down now, could have caused Mr. Donner to unintentionally implicate himself. For instance, if Mr. Donner had agreed to calm down and stop cussing out Trooper Wingo, it could have insinuated that his his conduct was unreasonable before he was handcuffed, and that he believed that his detention was justified. This is one of the many reasons that citizens should invoke their right to remain silent when police officers attempt to question them, as when an individual answers a question inexactly or incorrectly, it can be used to incriminate them, even when they are innocent. I'm just trying to ask and I just said questions. sure. I just so want your badge number. I just want your badge number and your name. Okay. That's all I want. Okay. This is gonna end horribly. I just want him, I'm trying to get him to calm down. But he doesn't want to, he wants to continue to yell at me for no reason, okay? Hey, Chevy Wedge, down the bank, go ahead. I said he has severe PTSD. I don't know if he has malicious intent. He's over here yelling and cussing me. Now I'm just trying to get his information, and he wants to start yelling, stop in the middle of the road for no reason. I understand why he was freaking out because you hit our car. That's why he was upset, was because you hit us. Driver from the back, so he started cussing me out, and I had to calm down. Okay, okay. But everything's good to go? Yeah. He just wants to yell and cuss me for no reason, so I got him out and put him in the car. You're good? Yeah. Okay. I was coming this way. He was, I saw him riding my butt. Okay. I didn't really care. Car talked to him going 60. I'm on overtime. Turned around. Right. When I went to turn around, he slammed me. He was hot? Yeah. Oh. Uh, he, I had to turn around. I don't say I'm brakes or anything. I hit my brakes, turn around. I knew he was riding my butt. I just to turn around. Yeah. Um, turned around, and when I turned around, he starts laying on his horn. So I was like, okay. So you want to lay on your horn, I'll just pull you over before I get close. So when I turned around, 
turn back around to come behind him. He moves straight over from the inside lane to the outside lane, moves straight over and just slams on the brakes. And I'm just trying to get behind him, and he slams on the brake. And I didn't even have my lights on at that point, but he just stops in the middle of the road. Trooper Wingo recounts his version of events to a fellow trooper who responded to the scene, which is wildly different from what the dash and cab cam show actually occurred. First, Trooper Wingo claims that Mr. Donner was following him too closely, but the cab footage shows that Mr. Donner left plenty of distance between the two vehicles while Trooper Wingo was driving in front of him. Trooper Wingo also alleges that he had not activated his emergency lights when Mr. Donner stopped his vehicle, but the cab cam also shows that he did in fact turn on his emergency lights before the collision occurred. Finally, Trooper Wingo insists that Mr. Donner stopped in the middle of the road, when Mr. Donner had clearly pulled into the right lane to yield to the police vehicle. What the video footage also shows is that Trooper Wingo started to make a U-turn without first getting into the middle turning lane. Then, when Mr. Donner honked his horn at him, Trooper Wingo turned back around to pull over Mr. Donner and ultimately slammed into Mr. Donner's vehicle when he stopped. Although Arkansas law does allow police vehicles to disregard traffic laws in some circumstances, they are generally required to follow the same rules of of the road as everyone else. For example, section 27-51-202 of the Arkansas Code establishes that certain speed limit laws, quote, do not apply to authorized emergency vehicles responding to emergency calls when the driver of the emergency vehicle is operating the vehicle's emergency lights and is also operating an audible signal by bell, siren, or exhaust whistle if other vehicles are present. However, the statute also explicitly states that, quote, this section does not relieve the driver of an authorized emergency vehicle from the duty to drive with due regard for the safety of all persons using the street, nor shall it protect the driver of any emergency vehicle from the consequence of a reckless disregard of the safety of others. Given this evidence, a court would probably determine that Trooper Wingo's erratic driving was not only likely responsible for the accident, but it was also illegal. Look, dude. You see these cars? You see the line? You see the mark? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't. Our U-cars are legal when we're going after the ride. Trooper Wingo eventually released Mr. Donner without charging him with disorderly conduct, and issued him a citation for following too closely and parking on a highway. Because of the traumatic experience they had with Trooper Wingo, the Donners decided not to fight these charges and paid the $330 fine. The couple recently decided to retain an attorney to pursue a civil rights lawsuit against Trooper Wingo, and Ms. Donner has created a GoFundMe campaign to help cover the costs of attorney fees. You can find a link in the description below. Overall, Trooper Wingo gets an F for causing a crash by recklessly operating his patrol vehicle, intentionally misrepresenting the facts of the encounter to justify his actions, and for violating Mr. Donner's First and Fourth Amendment rights by arresting him for his speech. Not only did Trooper Wingo exercise poor discretion by choosing to pull over someone who honked at him rather than an individual who was potentially committing an actual violation, but he also needlessly violated several traffic laws and caused a low-speed crash in an effort to do so. It could certainly be argued that the trooper's actions put more more citizens in danger than Mr. Donner would have if he actually had been following the trooper too closely, and it would be difficult for anyone, much less a court, to find Trooper Wingo's conduct anything but objectively unreasonable. Trooper Wingo failed to take responsibility for his actions, arrested a citizen for criticizing his conduct, and was unable to control the situation in a peaceful and professional manner. And this is yet another encounter where an officer attempted to criminalize behavior that their ego could not tolerate, rather than making a legitimate effort to de-escalate the situation. It seems clear that Mr. Donner has a civil case on his hands, and it'll be interesting to see whether he is able to raise the funds to find representation. Mr. Donner gets an A for remaining relatively calm and collected throughout the encounter, verbally invoking his right to remain silent, and for maintaining a reasonable balance between challenging the conduct of the troopers and complying with their commands. As discussed earlier, profanities are generally protected under the First Amendment, especially when directed at police officers, and nothing that Mr. Donner said constituted a violation of 
of any legitimate statute. Considering that he was being accused of following Trooper Wingo too closely, immediately after being rear-ended by the trooper, Mr. Donner was reacting to the situation in a relatively reasonable manner. Mr. Donner also made a point to verbally invoke his right to remain silent, and refused to waive that right despite Trooper Wingo's insistence that remaining silent was not necessary. I commend Mr. Donner for effectively exercising his right to silence, and for having the courage to follow up this encounter with legal action. A link to Mr. Donner's GoFundMe will be in the description below if you are interested in helping him retain an attorney. And be sure to give Lackluster your support. You can find a link to his channel in the description as well. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content. Thank you.